What's the best loophole on an exam you've ever seen? My organic chemistry professor, Dr. Mallory, was infamous across campus. Her reputation for crafting exams so brutal that students actually switched majors just to avoid her class was legendary. Her midterms had a 50% drop rate. She would actually smile when students cried. I'm not exaggerating. She kept a box of tissues on her desk during office hours like they were trophies. Our final exam was scheduled for three hours, but thanks to the university's policy, students could stay up to five. Most did. The test was 10 pages of pure chemical warfare. Nine questions, each harder than the last and everyone building on the previous. If you messed up the first question, you were basically doomed. I was holding my own until I hit question 7. We had to synthesize a ridiculously complex organic molecule using only five specific reagents. The molecule had four chiral centers, multiple functional groups, and required at least 12 reaction steps to complete. Around me, people were unraveling. The guy to my right was frantically flipping through notes we weren't even allowed to have. The girl in front of me had her head down on the desk, shoulders shaking. Someone else was on their third blue book, scribbling and crossing out entire pages. I stared at that molecule for 45 minutes. Drew pathways, crossed them out, tried again. Nothing worked. With the given reagents, it was impossible to get the correct stereochemistry on all four chiral centers. My heart sank. I was going to fail. My GPA would tank. Med school applications were due in three months. I could almost feel my future slipping through my fingers. Then I noticed something strange about the drawing. One of the bonds looked off almost like it had been edited. I flip back to the instructions. Synthesize the following molecules using only the reagents provided. If a synthesis is not possible, explain why. That last sentence. That tiny clause everyone, including me, had overlooked in our panic. I looked at the molecule again. It violated Brett's rule. It had an alkene at a bridgehead position in a bicyclic system, which creates way too much ring strain to actually exist. On top of that, two of the chiral centers would be impossible to control with the given reagents. I wrote three solid paragraphs explaining exactly why the synthesis couldn't be done, citing specific stereochemical principles and ring strain theory. I detailed which bonds couldn't form and why certain reactions would fail. I finished my exam a full hour before anyone else. When I walked to the front to hand it in, Dr. Mallory looked up with that predatory smile. Giving up so soon, Mr. Carter? She said loudly enough for everyone to hear. I'm not giving up, I said quietly. I'm done. Two weeks later, grades were posted. The class average was 28%. Dr. Mallory stood at the front of the room, looking as disappointed as ever. Most of you wasted hours attempting an impossible synthesis, she said. Only three students recognized that question seven was a trap. In real chemistry, knowing when a reaction won't work is just as important as knowing when it will. She held up my exam. Mr. Carter here wrote the most complete explanation perfect score. I ended up with a 94% on the final. The next highest score was 61. Five students changed majors that semester. Dr. Mallory still uses my answer as an example in her class.